Nine Mile Canyon runs from Duchesne to Carbon County in the eastern part of Utah. The rock art that you see here is a part of the world's longest art gallery, a unique display that gives us insight into cultures from the past. Nine Mile Canyon is one of three or four major canyons that are in the kind of the northeastern Utah, northwestern Colorado area that harbor evidence of the Fremont culture, uh, covering from around AD 500 to 1400s. They're rugged up and down canyons with uh, good water. They provided a, a, a good homeland for the Fremont of this, this particular part of the world. Farmers and hunter gatherers, they left significant rock art. Uh, one of the most renowned areas in, in North America for, for rock art. Other places may have a, some, some places have a lot, but Nine Mile generally has more. That's the reason why we call it a special place. I've lived in Price and worked in Nine Mile for 40 years, and I can come out here anytime I want and find a site that I have not seen before. I and mean, that's what a day in Nine Mile Canyon is like. If you get out and walk, almost continuous sites. That's how dense it is. So, Kayla, what, what, do you, what do we know about this site? Project Discovery, Nine Mile Canyon Stewardship Day, is an archaeology-based program for high school students. Students host a site in the canyon with volunteer professional archaeologists and other canyon experts. Their goal is to raise awareness about threats to ancient art and artifacts here in Nine Mile Canyon and throughout the desert southwest. Looks like a monkey with a bow and arrow yeah. shooting a goat. So Stewardship Day is just a day to raise awareness about the beauties of Nine Mile Canyon. It, it allows kids my age, I'm 17, even younger, I started this when I was 15, it allows us to, to grow our passion for archeology. span You can even see uh, be below the, the amazing red elk, there, there's yellows and there's kind of bluish grays. Yeah, because all this stuff is there. Ra rare pigments around here. Even further down the road, there's like a perfect cyan elk, like, Perfect, like it's been preserved under this overhang by a river. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that it hasn't been washed away. There is just a persistence. Everything that is, is painted or drawn here is to the eye of the beholder. They could be maps, they could be painted figures. We have no idea what it means, but it's here and it's beautiful nonetheless. And I just want to tell everyone about them. I want to show them that this is out here and we can appreciate it all. Okay, people come here for the experience, mm -hmm. and part of the experience is, is having that uh, emotional connection with place, uh, and and uh, I can tell you love it, yeah. and so your passion rubs off. So don't be afraid to let your passion show. I love the site because it has a little bit of everything that you're gonna see throughout the canyon. It has vandalism, petroglyphs, pictographs, it even has smoke stains right there that, oh, we'll, yeah. that we believe to be smoke stains from fires that they built back then. So we think this was a good Yeah, time. I hope I can get everybody to enjoy the site. Mm -hmm. I want them to see everything they can about it. Yeah, I mean, that, sh that should be our goal is, is uh, appreciation. Mm -hmm. And if, if people appreciate it, then they might want to get further knowledge. Uh, but if they appreciate it, they'll want to take care of it. If you look right here, uh -huh. you can see someone tried to steal this work right here. Oh, like, oh. I was they tried to cut it out. To, yeah, it kind of looks like scrapes. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. That's sad. Yeah, it is horrible. Yeah. As you go through this canyon, you see a lot of vandalism, like either writing, bullets, like people just disrespect it. Like in the one at Great Hunt, people chalked it so they could get a better picture, but that ruins it. Um, we need to protect these because they're very old and we take advantage of them a little bit, but it's our history and we should protect this. And it's kind of hard because like we have oils on our fingers and if you touch it, it like degrades the rock surface. So we have to be careful not to touch. Across this site, you also see numerous examples of vandalism. For example, here, 
someone carved their name in, and the year when they left it. It's really despicable to see this kind of vandalism here because this is such sacred art. So many things went into this and we can't replenish it, so we need to preserve it. What's the story of the private property sign across the country ground? So, so the landowner out here in the 60s, he had teenagers and people coming all over his, his land and he, he was very, very angry. He said, I don't want people here. I, I, should, I should make a point to, to keep them off. So he deliberately went right up to that pictograph and did that. painted it and spelled trespassing wrong. Wrong. He put, he put two S's in trespassing. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of humorous how uh, he, he made a mistake in, in writing that, but it's also very sad how he's, he's ruined and yeah. defaced such an amazing piece right of there. art. Yeah. Some of the things in this canyon that have really kind of written the prehistory books of this area are, are pretty incredible. It's not discoveries like a, a golden idol or a sarcophagus. We don't find things like that in this area. But we find complexes. We find villages where people lived in, 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 in houses and give us real insight into the past when those are found. <laughs> what we have here, that, see that little half of a circle? That's a clay-lined hearth. That would have been their fireplace and their kitchen. That's where they would have done a lot of their cooking. Well, we can only see part of it because they built this other wall on top of it, right? And basically, it's just finding little nuanced things that have a few signs that tell me that it looks like a human uh, was working it or used it. At this site, they've been also finding these little beads that are black, and they're very small and round. Um, and the pottery here is also gray, just a plain gray ware. It's the richness of the lives of the people who live here that is the that, that strikes me with awe every time I come down into this area. These are things that are as old as any of the masterpieces of art of Europe and uh, in the great galleries of the world. And it's something that many of us care deeply about and, and care to protect. Funding for This is Utah is provided by the Willard L. Eccles Foundation, the Utah Office of Tourism, the George S. and Dolores Dory Eccles Foundation, the Lawrence T. and Janet T. D. Foundation, and the contributing members of PBS Utah. Thank you.